Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network, as well as betonline.ag for all your sports betting needs. And if you are in or around the Greensboro area, be sure to check out the number one destination for your movie going experience. That is Red Cinemas. And you can check out their website for movie times, redcinemas.com. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino. And today we're going to be talking about the new documentary coming out by Daphne Bowie called King on Screen. It is premiering this weekend at Fantastic Fest in Austin, Texas. So for all our fans out there in Texas, be sure to check it out. It is a documentary on Stephen King's films. He has over 80 feature films. And uh, this documentary does a great job of taking an inside look at these movies with big names like Frank Darabont, Mike Flanagan, Greg Nicotero, and many others. So just to get started here, Daphne, I got to say the intro really, really like drew me into the documentary, especially with all the Easter eggs and all the hints from all the different movies and books. What was that process like for you to come up with like such an intricate like tribute to Stephen King and his movies and his books? Oh, I, I'm so glad because yeah, we we had to to work a lot on this uh, fictional introduction. We really wanted to start the film, um, to start the documentary as a as a film actually, like um, talking about films and having the the feeling that we are entering in a fiction. So mm -hmm. it, we really wanted um, to to work uh, that aspect a lot. And uh, so that's why we uh, worked with uh, Nicolas Pike for the music. And we had great actors as well coming in Maine, playing in the film. We had like, uh, I mean, uh, Carol Strucken, Amy mm -hmm. Irving, um, Jeffrey Deman, uh, Ed Wheeler, uh, Miko Yu. So, so many great, great actors. And it was a, an amazing experience to have them. And we really wanted to have something like an homage to Stephen King. Yeah. So I started by uh, rereading every book and uh, trying to pick a lot of difference, uh, references sorry, in each, uh, in each book um, to create some kind of story uh, that will where each part, each element of the story mm -hmm. is a reference. Uh, the, the characters, uh, the dialogues even, yeah. um, everything, everything in it. Uh, is a reference to uh, sometimes a short story, sometimes a novel, sometimes. So yeah, we really uh, went deep into that process to really have a kind of uh, immersive feeling uh, going into the Stephen King universe. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B L E A V 50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. It really did. I mean, it, it just sucked me right in from the beginning of it. I love all the homages in there. It gave me a very creep show like feel as far as just the way it was shot, the editing, the music, of course, in the beginning, it just seemed like we're getting ready to go into a Stephen King film, which we are as a documentary, but I got to say wonderful, wonderful intro. Oh, so in, in, yeah, of course. So how did you get started with Stephen King? Was it the movies first? Was it the books? Uh, was it something like friends and family? Like what was, what's your backstory when it comes to the, the King of horror? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually I discovered Stephen King for the first time when I was 10. Uh, I asked my father uh, to give me some kind of, um, I wanted to read a very frightening book. I told him I want to, to have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me, okay, then you should read The Shining. So that's the first time I discovered Stephen King. And I read The Shining like in two days. I was so 
hooked with it. I couldn't put it down, actually. And then after that, he told me, okay, uh, so, you know, there's a film. And I watched the, the, the film after yeah. reading the book. Uh, <laughs> so and it's how I met Stephen King. And then I read all the books that he wrote. And I've seen all the adaptations. And yeah. uh, that's how I wanted really to 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 make a documentary about the the filmmaker's point of view because it's something that we don't have the the chance to hear a lot. So I thought it could be great to have their point of view uh, on Stephen King's work and how they uh, managed to create something um, so close to the to the story and how. How would you deal with that, actually, with the, the whole adaptation process? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think it's great, too, that the documentary really shows the passion and the love that guys like Nico Taro and Frank Darabont and Flanagan have for Stephen King and the respect that they have for him, too. And especially, I'm glad that you brought up The Shining. It's always been one of those things where it's it's like Hollywood hearsay. Like, you always hear that Stephen King didn't like it, but, you know, why? And I thought that was a very interesting segment getting the points of views from Frank Darabont and those guys on really what went down and really clearing the air on, on why Stephen King really wasn't a big fan of his adaptation of it. So being that The Shining was the first book you read, and then I, I guess the first movie, what was your take on, on The Shining then after seeing it on the big screen and, and, and Stanley Kubrick's, I guess, iteration of it? Well, actually, it's, it's true that it's often some kind of... Um, nerving points when you talk about The Shining, because the, mm. uh, obviously uh, it's beautiful when, when you watch the movie, the shots, the, 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 the imagery, the, it's, it's amazing. And there are some really great uh, things in The Shining. But when you watch the film, after mm -hmm. reading the book, you've got this feeling that, well, you don't have, you, you don't, you have the feeling like almost it's not the same thing that you watch. It's not the thing yeah. that you read at all. Like you, you are kind of frustrated because it loses a lot when it's translated. This book, when it's translated to screen. So I think I was a little bit, yeah, I was disappointed with the film as a reader, really mm -hmm. much. Yeah. And something that it was interesting uh, discussing with the directors because uh, a lot of them had the same feeling, actually. The feeling that it's not a Stephen King uh, film that you are watching, but it's something very different, you know? Yeah, I, I like when Frank said, he goes, it's a good Stanley Kubrick film, but it's not a Stephen King adaptation to its heart. So I think everyone can agree with that. Now, when it came to getting a lot of these directors, you know, would you consider this process, was it difficult? Were a lot of them, you know, like more than happy to come on board? What, what was the process like of getting, you know, because he's got more than 50 directors that have done 80 of these projects and you got a lot of the big name one, uh, name ones out there, you know, so what was the process like as far as reaching out and, and getting the okays for interviews and things like that? Well, actually, when we, uh, um, me and the, the, the producer uh, started to work on the, on the documentary, uh, we were talking and saying, okay, but we have to know if the directors are on board since yeah. the documentary is really about them. Yeah. So we worked together to really well explain the project and what what I wanted to do as a director with, with this documentary. And then we sent an email to 10 directors and we were like hoping they would be on board. And like in two days, we had like 10 yes. So wow. we were like, okay, wow, that's amazing. That That's so great. And then we, we met um, with a lot of them actually, because some of them we, we had to do the interview remotely uh, mm. because of COVID, but Right. We met most of them, really. Uh, and uh, we had this change, uh, this change that um, a lot of directors uh, know each other. Yeah. So, for example, when we met uh, Vincenzo Natali, he said, okay, you should talk to Josh Boone. I know him. I will get you in touch, guys. And uh, Frank Darabon did the same film. Uh, the same thing for Greg Nicotero. So it was really, 
that kind of feeling like uh, everybody is um, connected and is on board and it was like a magical thing seeing everyone coming and talking about about king and about their work and it was so inspiring it it was an amazing adventure I, I could tell it. And like I said, it really, really shows on screen. And I think the great thing that this documentary does, I truly believe it's for all Stephen King fans, because you have some people that just like the movies. You have more people that just like the books. And I think this does a great way of really combining both worlds and showing the passion and what a lot of the directors and screenwriters had to do. And is that a message that, that you know, is part of a message that you're trying to get across with this incredible documentary that you did? Oh, thanks. Uh, well, it's something that we wanted to do, and uh, I wanted um, the documentary to be uh, as well a film that um, people who don't know very well Stephen King could enjoy. And for example, even for the fictional introduction, I there are a lot of references, and everybody who knows Stephen King will see a lot of references, mm -hmm. but the people who don't know Stephen King very well, they can still enjoy uh, the, the fictional introduction and they will see it differently, but it will work on them, I hope so. <laughs> but, I, uh, uh, well, in the way we, we built it, we, we, mm -hmm. we paid a lot of attention to that because we didn't want like someone who's not very familiar uh, going into the movie theater and being completely lost so that's why we we had to work uh work uh walk sorry on a thin rope because we really wanted people to be um in the film uh even if they are not really aware um, yeah yeah yeah, it, it was great to see how a lot of them talked about how they got introduced to Stephen King. And I think that's going to open the door for a lot of, you know, maybe the younger generation. Uh, you know, my daughter just turned 21, but she's a big Shining fan. That's her favorite uh, book and everything. So I got one last question here. As far as, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's obviously made some of his own appearances in some shows and some movies. Do you have any favorite Stephen King appearances in, in either TV shows or some of the movies? I really loved him uh, in Finner when he is uh, playing a pharmacist. I really liked that one. And uh, in it as well, because it was completely unexpected since uh, it, it's, uh, well, it's a recent one and we haven't seen him in the, the more recent adaptations, actually. There were a lot of uh, Netflix adaptation, for example, or, and we haven't seen uh, Stephen King in a lot of them. And then suddenly we, we seen in the uh, in hits. So it was kind of unexpected and pretty cool. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, I really do appreciate your time, Daphne. For those of you out there listening, this episode will be out this week. If you are in Austin, try to check it out. Fantastic Fest. And then this will be out shortly after. Much success and, be and best of luck to you, Daphne, with this incredible documentary. I can't wait for the rest of the world to see it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks. Got it. Thank you. Thanks for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube. Hey, it's Michelle Beadle. That's right, the Michelle Beadle. You're welcome. You love talking about sports. I love talking about sports. You know the only thing cooler than talking about sports? Sports! And right now, all your favorite sports are on Sirius XM. I'm talking every NFL game, every game from the NBA, NHL, MLB, every NASCAR race, golf major, major conference college sports, and all the top games in the WNBA. If it gets your heart pumping, it's on Sirius XM. To start your free, free, free trial of Sirius XM today, visit SiriusXM.com slash believe.